Halloween is here and with it comes fun things in TF2 like spells, pumpkin pumps, spooky cosmetics like Freddy Fazbear. Wait, I already did this joke last year. Ah, who cares, let the joke continue. Be advised, Freddy Fazbear has been deployed on the battlefield. Get Freddy Fazbear! Be advised, Freddy Fazbear is dead! He's f***ing <laughs> dead! It's also a good time to just enjoy different horror media, especially in Finland, as days get shorter and nights are more dark. But you know, I like all of this horror stuff, but I also like TF2. So as the certified map guy, I went ahead and searched the TF2 workshop for different levels that were based on different horror media, and found some really cool ones that I wish to show you all. But before I do, I want to mention that I did something similar last year where I listed some scary maps in TF2 in general, so once you're done with this video and want to see more scary levels, I do recommend watching it. But let's start off this list with a map that's really impressed me. I need some doggone help! Slendy Tapis is a V-script powered level that aims to bring the game with the same name to TF2. I'm very certain that most of you should all know about this already, but Slendy Tapis is a Teletubby parody of the Slender the 8 Pages game, where you need to avoid the Tapis instead of some skinny guy in a suit. You start the game in Tuppy land with nothing but a flashlight and a little bit courage. You can also sprint for a limited time with Mouse 3 and your goal is to collect 10 casters and avoid the purple teletubby known as Tinky Winky. The map you play on is a really nice recreation from the first game and it's technically a port from Gmod and it has all the classic locations like Hanging Po, the Lala at the lake and of course the main building with decapitated Dipsy and burning Nunu. Playing this level alone is fairly scary, especially when you see Tinky Vicky zooming around the level and every time you pick up a caster, Tinky's aggressiveness and speed increases, making it very hard to collect them all. And the creator has captured that panic inducing moment when Tinky Vinky spots you. This map has a dynamic difficulty system where the level becomes harder the more people there are in the server. I did try to beat this level alone, but though maybe grabbing a few people won't help me beat it, but I guess that didn't really work. I'm, I'm easily identifiable by my <laughs> usual role. Ah! Oh, what the f What the f <laughs> I just got f I'm scared, bro. What the f ah! What the f Overall, a really cool v script game mode. This map was very nostalgic to play, and Slendy Tuppies was really popular in my teenage years, and I could even argue has passed Slenderman in terms of being remembered more fondly. Help! Afraid. I am the cure. Afraid SCP is a trading map based on the horror media franchise SCP, where they contain all the creepy features that will threaten humanity. Like Freddy! Okay, I'll stop with the joke. Like some crying guy and dude who dresses up as some plague doctor. The level takes some inspiration from the SCP Containment Bridge game, as we can see with the architecture and how the map overall looks like. Both teams start at the like containment zone, there are some offices around the base, bathrooms, cafeteria and some containment areas, like this big <coughs> room where SCP-173 a sentient peanut hangs around in. You can also open the gates with buttons, but good luck getting out if you get stuck there. Then there's the heavy containment zone which you can access with the elevator. There you can find more offices and a room where your person will get the leg broken to lure SCP-106 and old guy back to his cell. And you can even end up in his pocket dimension and need to do some platforming to escape back to your reality. Overall a fairly fun and well detailed map, it's a bit claustrophobic but I did enjoy my time exploring this level and I do enjoy how interactive the level is with the gates and being able to enter the pocket dimension is just another cool addition to this fun level. Help me! Stupendous! CP Emesis is a recreation of some of the locations that you can see this Emesis Blue film. I originally covered this on one of my 2 Fort videos, but it would be a crime if I didn't talk about Emesis on a horror map video. The 2 Fort location is fairly nicely recreated as it still has the spooky vibe, like with the ominous lights in the sewer, the cakes where the Cyclops was seen, the intel area where one of the NG bros got his head smashed between piano and the spam room where zombies attack soldier and Cyclops. Then there are some other locations like the freezer room, Scout's mom's apartment and Dale's bar. Then there's a rocket room that unfortunately doesn't do anything. I had to mention this map again as it's very fitting, plus the creator was very happy when I talk about his work, even earning an easter egg in his newest map. Even though it lacks some stuff from the film's location like the machinery in the basement, it's still a nice recreation and has earned its spot in this list. <laughs> Most people like my hugs. I had to record this on Gma to the mapping the Sun for Slender Fortress, as just having a flashlight will help you actually see what the level is like. 
Five rounds of Freddy's is a slender map that recreates the restaurant from the first five nights of Freddy's game. Like you got the office where you stand around in, the main restaurant area where there's the stays on Pirate Cove, and then the smaller rooms like Parts and Surface. Then you got some original additions to the level like vents in the bathroom area and large scale basement which can enter by going through the big doors or going through the large hall in the office. And there's even the kitchen which wasn't seen through the cameras and unfortunately you won't find Golden Freddy in there. And because this is a slender fortress map you also got the blue area which I will quickly cover. There is Klubabos you standing behind locked doors, you have a platforming area where at the end can find a jukebox that plays music and a PvP arena. I really like this level, as it's very nostalgic and I'm personally a fan of NAF, so I really enjoy being able to explore the pizzeria in TF2 and it's especially nostalgic when it has the old animatronic models from 2014. I just really like the first game's restaurant and generally anything related to NAF. Which brings us to our next map. Come on, fellas! Did someone order a new friend? Full NAF maps in a row isn't that kind of vice you might say? It is, but it's my video and I get to choose what levels to ramble about. Return to Freddy's is a recreation of the location in the second game. It's somewhat different from the previous map as it seems the place is being shut down probably following the bite of 87, so it looks fairly messy. It has the same layout but with a few tweaks like the previous level had, like you got the office that is connected with the big <coughs> hallway, you can enter the vents, you got all these party rooms and the big main room. There is also a hallway that connects from past and service room to the main stage and with that you can access the bathrooms. Like I previously mentioned you can enter the vents and with them can enter locked rooms and even take some shortcuts to different parts of the map. Meanwhile at the blue side, they really isn't much this time around as they only have a PvP arena. I feel like Club Apple, the creators of these maps were starting to get bored of NAF, which might explain the lack in blue side. It's a shame because this was just another excellent level and it would have been really interesting to see how she would have made the Dirt Games location. Incoming! Back in 2023 a small indie game called Little Company was released, which I'm sure you all haven't heard about. So obviously it was bound that someone would make a level based on it. Little Experience is actually a really nice and somewhat eerie level as it accurately recreates some of the facilities you will see in the game. It's an attack and defend map where the red team needs to prevent the blue team from capping your singular point. I kind of wish there will be an outside area where blue team needs to go through it to enter the facility as they spawn in the ship and get teleported straight inside, but other than that it's still a very nice level and honestly kind of creepy as well. Gotta move that gear up! For our final map I want to show you all Backrooms Khan. I'm fairly certain you all know what Backrooms are at this point, it's a liminal space horror where if you not clip out of reality you will end up there. This map is very impressive and very big, so big that it's pretty easy to get lost in there. Both teams start at the lobby area, which is pretty creepy. It obviously has some scribbles on the walls, that one room with the holes in the floor and that one very yellow room with three holes in the walls and a corpse of a scout. If you look around closely you can also find some other layers like the party room, that weird hallway with lots of pipes, you can enter the dark rooms if you drop down in the pits found in the lobby level. This is really massive that also leads to some market that you can enter, but hey, there are pictures of cats, this is pretty awesome. Then there's some house layer that leads to the pools which for some reason feels pretty atmospheric with these color lights that are found here. There are some other levels like another house team, apartment buildings and a Hello Kitty room where you can fight the hazmat suit. Obviously you can wear it, but it's still pretty cool. There are some other aspects like the pickups have been replaced with almond water and anxiety pills, a room with various pictures of Neko Ark, which I can probably safely assume is the creator's favorite character from Fate franchise. And even a secret credits room which shows different pictures of the back rooms, that also has some party rooms around and hope you leave the places by going to the void and entering the wall of light. This map was really cool, I can't really say I understood every aspect that there was as I only know the server stuff from some of the backroom games that there are, but I really liked this level. It was fairly eerie in some aspects and I really enjoyed how detailed it was and really enjoyed my time exploring it. And that's all for the day, I was rather surprised how many horror media based maps there were as I always thought that those were more reserved to games like Gary's Mod, this is a more of a sandbox game than a team based shooter. There were a lot more levels that I found that were pretty nice, but of course I want to keep this video relatively short, so if this video does well I might do a second part where I will go over more of these horror maps, as who doesn't like exploring spooky levels in TF2. Anyway, like the video if you enjoyed it and want to see another part, comment down below your own favorite map shown during this video, subscribe for more TF2 and have a nice day.